Um, you studied graphic and art design at the Harare Politic and art history and music in history and society from UNISA. Um, what do you think you got from these institutions that you found valuable in, this, in, in your career? I think it, it, these, there's no simple answers to these things. And as you look backwards, yeah. um, you find more and more that you took our value. But I think, you know, obviously you have your education, everything that goes with that, the ability to research, to think a little bit more broadly and a bit more deeply. Yeah. But thinking about it, it's probably the people that I encountered that have had the impact on my life from those institutions. The Harare Polytech has, was an extraordinary place uh, and has continued to play an important role in art education um, in, in Zimbabwe. But during that time, that was the late 80s and the, into the early 90s, yeah. it, it was a very dynamic place with some extraordinary teachers. Um, and two that I would mention would be Martin van der Spee and Pip Curley. Both those people had an immense impact on my life uh, in different ways. One, Martin van der Spee was an extraordinary teacher yeah. uh, in terms of technical ability, uh, very well educated, very well read. And his, I've carried that through from him up till the present. And Pip Curling had an immense impact on my life culturally and thinking about culture and in particular um, aspects of gender and feminism and that sort of thing that was quite f formative to me yeah. at that time in my life. I went to UNISA later on in my life and again you have maybe with some maturity it's quite interesting to go and do do some further education. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again there were individuals within there. The UNISA art and music department is quite extraordinary and to be able to encounter these very um, well-respected academics was amazing, but I think more importantly to be able to get an education that is from Southern Africa where we live and relates to where we live yeah. and the ideas and the discourse are central to what we are, to where we are. And I think that was probably some of the most valuable things yeah, to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love what you mentioned about, about context there, right? Like, that's very interesting. I didn't, yeah, I've, yeah. I've never thought of it yeah. from that lens where you're actually looking more deeply into things that um, I think directly affect us. Uh, but uh, a key, what I perceive to be a key part of your education, having looked at your profile was Delta Gallery, um, how, I think you, your first exhibition there was 94, which is wild because I wasn't yeah, even yeah. born, yeah. it was like yeah. three years before I was yeah. born. <laughs> but how, how instrumental were, were those, you know, formative years mm -hmm. at, at Gallery Delta under what appears to, to be the mentorship of, mm -hmm. of Helen Lieros for you? Yeah, so I, I cannot talk of my life without speaking of Helen Lieros because yeah. in a way she, in a, in a way she rescued me from certain failure uh, and, <laughs> and in fact to go back to the Polytech I only met Helen Leros because I was thrown out of the Polytech so that was a That's interesting. Yeah, that was <laughs> and, and I should add to the interview thrown out by the person that I just mentioned as one of the people of the greatest influence of my life which was Pip Curling um, so <laughs> So circles and roundabouts, yeah. and in fact all three of the people I've mentioned are deceased and they yeah. hold a huge, a huge part of my life. I met Helen Neros, she was teaching at Ilsa College at the time and what I found was the power of an extraordinary teacher and a teacher that goes beyond art and art education but a person that can actually transform your life yeah. and she did that for me. Um, I should, for the record, say I went back to the Polytech and ended yeah. up graduating very well. <laughs> so that's there. Um, and Helen, so we, we learned at Ilsa, there was an extraordinary, vibrant culture of young artists she nurtured. Not so much technical ability and aspects of art, but she nurtured the environment that we fed off. A group yeah. of us, maybe eight or ten of us. Um, and it, it directed our life. 
Then she moved to Gallery Delta, by which stage we're not pupils, but she remained my mentor uh, yeah. until her death. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, lo I love that. And, and, and so we, that's essentially a lot of like the education you've had, right? Mm. Um, but your art is, is interesting to me, always has been. And more recently that I've actually finally like experienced it firsthand when um, your most recent exhibition, uh, your art is expressed in different mediums. Mm. There's digital drawings, mm. there's installation, etching, sculpture, painting. Mm. Why do you think you've chosen uh, for your art to manifest itself in this manner instead of maybe specializing in, in one medium as is the case for other mm. artists at, at times? It, yeah, it's funny. I think a simple answer to the question is that the world of art has expanded in a way to allow these lines between things to blur, you know, especially yeah. if we go broader than the medium this, that I work in and that you've mentioned into performance and into music and whatever else, these yeah. sort of boundaries have dissipated. So, and I, it, it's very interesting to me because in a way it takes it out of the gallery space and it allows a more democratic approach to art, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, for my own part, I think of myself as a painter, which is funny because I haven't touched paint since about 2008. <laughs> <laughs> Except, I, as you've seen, it's become mud and, well, I think that one work is 2011 or 13, there's paint there. Yeah. But um, in my mind, and that goes back to those three teachers again, they were painters. Um, I think of myself as a painter. Hand in hand goes drawing and printmaking with those things. but. Um, the process of breaking through the two-dimensional surface, I, can't, I, could, I won't go into it now, but I can trace that line through my work, yeah. which took me away from the paint. You know, I was painting, a, a, briefly, I was painting a tear in a piece of fabric. Yeah. At, like we do, it was an illusion. And then I started to scratch, scratch it, and I saw it deepen the illusion. And before long, I said, well, I've no longer painted an illusion. I've made the scratch. Yeah. And it led actually to everything I do. I said, all right, there's no point. Let me not represent the mud. Let me use mud. Let me not draw pictures mud of wire. wire. Let me use the wire. It broke the boundaries mm -hmm. of representation in a way. Yeah. Um, the work became more and more sculptural. Uh, it's just yeah, a lot, of, a lot of them are like installations. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Very, very, very... Very, very different, right? And, yeah. and so uh, that's scary. Uh, that sounds scary in that uh, you perceive yourself as a painter. I'm sure that at the time you made that transition, you were mostly painting. Um, did you consciously decide to move into these things uh, and were you afraid or it happened and then you realized, oh no, we're in too deep already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm lucky that the, the freedom I've had through teaching, teaching is a huge part of my life, as yeah. you know. It, the freedom of having a salary every month means that you don't have to dictate what you do in the <laughs> studio according to that. Now, artists have different ideas and approaches on that. For me, I've never had to say, what does this matter? I've actually followed these ideas through. Uh, so yeah. I've, had, I've had that freedom. But, uh, you know, you point out that those different mediums are there. Um, each one gives you a different purpose. I can say I cannot represent a bucket of soil by drawing it and painting it the same way as a bucket of soil. Yeah. But I can represent something else in an idea through a drawing in a way that a sculpture can't do. So I found even when I was putting together this recent exhibition, one of my concerns was, can I bring these three parts together? together. Because you would normally put a body of work that was a little bit more coherent and at the end you think, is this going to work? I think it worked. Yeah. 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 And, and so an interesting thing about that is you have um, pieces like Sentinel. That's as far back as 2011 yeah. Yeah. that are in this current exhibition. Mm -hmm. For you how, do you, how do you get to decide what goes into an exhibition and, and when the time is right mm -hmm. for something to go out into the world? So... So usually what would happen is you work yeah. on a body of work. Now, 
that may be three pieces of work for a group exhibition or maybe you're building up for a solo exhibition or something like yeah. that. And you would, as you, well, this is my process, not to, uh, Every, it's not pres yeah. prescriptive. <laughs> it's not mutually exclusive. Yeah. I work on a bunch of work at a time and you keep coming, returning to those things. At some point you decide that can be finished or that can stay in that state because maybe some things can never be finished, you can yeah. keep developing. <laughs> so let me leave that. I've got paintings which must be 20 paintings in one and you keep reworking them. Think, <laughs> if I'd had different, if I'd had first just, one, yeah. I'd have 20 <laughs> paintings, not one. Um, that work, if it's successful in your mind, would go to that yeah. body of work. Now, some of them you hang on to. That work you mentioned, Sentinel, I'd actually exhibited it twice before, once at Gallery Delta and also at National Gallery. It was included in, a, in an exhibition there. But yeah. it's one that stayed in my collection. So it's been around, it's hung in my office, it's hung in my home. And it was only looking now through the framework of, of borders, putting this exhibition together and I'd included another work and I thought, well, yeah. if I've included that one, this one also fits. It fits. What's interesting, when I made Sentinel, the ideas that I was thinking about were removed from the ones I was currently thinking about the past two or three years. But when you put a new framework around and you say, well, that fits in just as well into this framework, and maybe I was actually talking about this when I made, when that, I made that, I didn't know it. <laughs> um, a, part, a part of art making is you want to communicate something. A bigger part is maybe you want to discover something. If you haven't discovered everything in a piece of work, man, maybe it's richer for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that is actually like a, a very beautiful part of, of, of creating. Yeah. Sometimes you, you sit with something or you work on something and then you only discover that it actually means this years yeah, after making absolutely. it. So yeah. That's, yeah. that sounds extremely yeah. like rewarding and that yeah. sounds... Yeah. <laughs> and that, that sounds meaning exciting. is never fixed. <laughs> that, I mean, always, always something never to fixed. To. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, when was your last solo? Um, I think 20, 2008. I'm yeah, I think so. Somewhere there. nine, somewhere there. I think something like that. And yeah. so I asked that because um, the most uh, grey zones, the most mm -hmm. recent one uh, at Pikisha, that's a solo as well, right? Um, and know. reading the... Um, the excerpt that, that Peter, the, the statement Peter put out for it, you know, he said you chose and actually approached them mm -hmm. to, to have it in that space. Mm -hmm. So that interested me because I was wondering what, what draws someone after like 13, is it 13, if not 15 years? 15, yeah, after 15 years of not having a solo, what drew you yeah, to a space yeah. like that and be like, yeah. okay, I think it's time now. Yeah. So uh, the not having a solo, I have to put down to other parts of life, partly yeah. which was, you have, you have children, it's a different stage of life. <laughs> and um, I'd started at Hellenic Academy there, and we were involved in building a new school, you know, so we put a lot into that, um, yeah. which has been rewarding. And those, to have that body of time to put together a, a group of work, maybe hasn't been available to me for, for a long for quite time. A while. Um, so I've participated in many group shows since then. And some of those have been, you know, two or three people. So again, 10 or 12 pieces of work. So yeah. although there haven't been solo shows, there's been significant it's a shows. Significant in. amount of work. Yeah. Um, that space passed, as you said, I had a little bit more time. I'd also been working on this body of work for a couple of years. And um, it coincided with the end of Gallery Delta. I've been at Gallery Delta since about 1991. I think you said 1994. Yeah. I believe I had earlier work even than that, but yeah, about 30 yeah, years there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Gallery Delta closed. And so I had a couple of years of sort of sorting out. And you know, to say Gallery Delta closed is not a simple thing in my life. It, it's an institution that's been part of my life since I was 16. Yeah. Yeah. And the people involved, which is Helen Leros and her husband, were part of my life there. So there was a settling in period and I sort of sat down and said, right, what do I do? You know, and I'm now an artist without a home. Yeah. Where to go? That's when I approached Artillery and, and Peter. Um, 
for, and for different reasons. You know, you look around and you say, which is a place that suits me? Where, where's a place I might be comfortable? Yeah. And I asked Peter to come and see me. You know, I'd been, I think he's been running artillery for about five years. I've been aware yeah. of what he's been doing and seen some of the shows in there. And it was interesting to me because he seems to be a person that is removed from art world politics and which I love I, I can't be I've, I have no interest in that yeah um, so that was one attraction I asked him to come and see me not knowing also whether he's going to say yes let's, let's do, do something or not <laughs> so I was grateful when I said yes and um, like anything I've done in my life I think it's the people that are involved that make something important Peter's got a very rare quality that is which is he listens when you speak. I, I mean, you can go through 2,000 people and you won't come you won't across people easily. who listen when you speak. <laughs> and Peter's like that. And it's, a, uh, it's wonderful for me to meet someone who actually listens to you. Um, anyway, so we got on well. We seemed to formulate some sort of idea. Yeah. And it went from there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. So it was really natural to, to move into that yeah, space. That yeah. What you assumed you were getting into was kind of proven right. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's been exciting for me because with artillery is a whole new community that I'm coming across. And, you know, which is what I wanted as well. We, yeah. And, you know, all of these things intertwine, which comes back to the closing of Gallery Delta and everything else that happened. Um, there was a time for something new, I believed, there. Um, there was a time for something new for me as an individual and yeah. to find that and yeah. to tap into a different part of Zimbabwean society has been wonderful. It's been, yeah, yeah and I, would, I, would, I would say the same thing, right? Because artillery has been a fantastic gateway for me into the art world because for me, I, I've immersed myself into this world, I think, just the past two years. Mm. So I'm really like fairly new in this space and I've met yeah. so many. Yeah. That's where we got to meet. Exactly. Like I knew you existed. Yeah. I've yeah. seen yeah. Um, a lot of your activity online. Mm. But being able to see, being able to meet and actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. a different thing. Like you're saying, tapping into that community yeah. is, 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 is quite wonderful. Yeah. And so in regards to um, the exhibition, right? Um, and your art in general, I feel... I think art in general, not your art. I think art in general, and this is my perspective as someone new to this world, where I'm still like wrangling with, with meaning and I'm trying to come to terms with what does this mean? Uh, why is this there? Mm. I recently spoke to an artist who was talking about maybe the significance of something as simple as a nail, mm. where mm. artists have an ability to see nails, you know, nails or everyday objects, mm. right? You take um, fences, wires, mm. Uh, kettle horns, <laughs> soil, yeah, mud, like yeah, you were saying yeah, just yeah. a few minutes ago. You take these things and you incorporate that into your art. Mm. Um, why do you think artists have that ability to see like life in ordinary objects? Mm. I, I'm always a little bit hesitant in thinking, I, it's funny, I, because, yeah. it's funny because as I'm saying this, I'm thinking on my, on my studio wall, my classroom <laughs> studio, I've got a song by Bob Dylan where he celebrates an artist and he says the artist like, can see everything just as your question is. <laughs> and I love that song. And now I'm about to contradict it and yeah. say, I don't know that an artist has something inside them that makes them different to other people. I think that lots of what we do is a learned thing. You know, you say, all right, can I take an ordinary material and is there some beauty? So maybe it starts with a question. Maybe there's a willingness in the beginning to say, can I find something in this? Yeah. Um, and, and you know, also the other thing that we can't always c jump to conclusions about is that other people will find the same beauty in there. You know, I always laugh um, yeah. and they say, <laughs> Did you sell it? And I said, well, there's not much market for barbed wire and mud in someone's house. You know? so, yeah. So maybe I'm communicating something, but it's not that that beauty is maybe not seen by everyone. I think that creative people have an ability to see things in different ways. That's what makes them creative. Yeah. And I do think creativity is something that runs through some people in different proportions to other people. Yeah. 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 I, I love that. And, and so, 
um, up until this point, we've been referencing um, Hellenic mm. here and there, right? Uh, massively important to you, like you mentioned, mm. 2008, mm. you went to Hellenic, so that means you've been there for 15 years. That's yep. a long time, yep. right? Um, yep. And to me, that's interesting because I, I assume, and do correct me if I'm wrong, that by, by teaching art, mm. you learn something else uh, that's maybe perhaps different to what you've gotten from art when you've been just making it. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think when you teach something, there's, there's no better way to clarify your thoughts than to have to teach someone. Yeah. What it, and whether that's repairing a bicycle or whatever it is. If you have to pass on those instructions, you have to know what you're talking about. And if you don't, you're very quickly exposed. So <laughs> uh, I think from that regard, in terms of whether you're thinking about an idea or whether you're actually teaching someone to draw or something like that, yeah. it helps you clarify things. I don't think that's what's kept me in teaching. I think um, f for me, teaching is, is the people. I, you know... The early part of my career, and I think probably many, many of us in the creative industry, yeah. you seem to think there's a time where I'll, I'll do whatever it needs to be. Uh, it could be whatever. In, mine's been making sandwiches, it's been teaching, it's been yeah. whatever. And at some point I will be a full-time artist. You know, you've got that aspiration always there. As my life's progressed, um, you know, and teachers, Depending on which culture, teachers are often quite um, thought of not as, it's not an esteemed profession, yeah. like certainly, yeah. um, although you can't, I don't want to generalize, but. But yeah, for the most part, yeah. it's not like a high status no, job. exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I so, understand. And that, sometimes it's in your pupils, it's in the people around you that you cannot be a proper artist if you're also a teacher. So when, you, when you're young, these things affect you, you know, and you say, all right, oh, at some point I'll be just an artist and not a teacher. Yeah, I'll have to leave this. Exactly. <laughs> As my life's gone on, you know, to be able to say artist and teacher is a badge to me, you know, and to actually think of myself as being an artist and not teaching, um, I, do, I don't know that that's a thing anymore. <laughs> Even if they said, now you can full-time paint, I said, I'd still like to teach a little bit. Yeah. What is it you, you're responding to people? And I think to come back to your original question, which is what can you learn about art? I think the thing that I've learned is that everyone has their own story. doesn't matter if you're talking about an 8-year-old or a 16-year-old or 50-year-old. Yeah. They've got their own story. And you're working with someone in giving them a means to tell that story. It's what you're doing. You're giving someone a means to tell a little bit of themselves and that's quite a privileged position yeah yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe it's learning that is what, what i've learned about art you know that each person can actually say something about themselves that's a wonderful thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah i love that i love that parallel where it's like we we come from extremely different worlds but there's that common yeah, ground yeah. sometimes and yeah. and life tends to be like that where mm. there are moments where um, what I love about that is it's like a unifying thing. It's like mm -hmm. your medium is art, yeah, mine is yeah, media, yeah, exactly. but at the end of the day there is some synergy there. We yeah. do have like a shared goal. Absolutely. It is, it is a, a really like a, a, a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But I think I would ask, uh, and, and I hadn't scripted mm -hmm. this, it, it came to me as you were speaking, is um, you've been an artist for more than three decades now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, where do where does Greg Shaw go to learn at, at this stage of your career? You know, so I read a lot. Um, I listen a lot. I look around me. Um, I, I if if we I think if we stop learning, something's gone wrong. You know, and it's one of the things that Helen we learned from Helen Leros was if you're doing the same thing over and over again, and you can look around in the world of arts. So there's something going wrong there, and I think yeah. what's missing is you're probably not learning there. So it needs you to go and learn. Now it's interesting you say that. I learn from my pupils. 
You know, I, I, first of all, you learn what the current world is like because if you shut yourself off yeah. and it moves so <laughs> fast, those are the people that are mostly keyed into what's going on. Um, so you learn something from them. Uh, and I think from trying to be aware, you, I think you could, you could be as arrogant about saying, I don't need to learn as I learn from everywhere. So I'm saying, I'm saying it with some humility that there's so much to learn from yeah. wherever you look. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. if you take the time. Yeah. I do love what you mentioned about <clears throat> young people. And mm. I, I do see that transition starting to happen with myself as I get a bit older. Mm. Is that um, the older you get, the more you have like responsibilities. Mm. It's really like hard to keep up with. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, everything yeah, in yeah. the way that um, younger people, I think that's a privilege that younger people mm. have is that they can really like immerse themselves mm. in culture in, in a way that's, and I don't even think it's conscious for them. <laughs> it's really subconscious, mm. but because they don't have as many responsibilities, mm. they can soak so much in and, yeah. and there's a lot yeah. to like to yeah. be learned from them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that interested me about you is we talked about digital being one of the mediums uh, that you've, you've taken on and there's a theme that keeps popping up as, as I track like the career of, of, of Greg Shoy. You're heavily present in that world like as a digital artist, mm. you've worked mm. in that medium a lot. Um, your social media presence is quite, um, it's quite great, especially for artists because the hardest thing about interviewing artists is like where do I find more about you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is super difficult every time I come across artists. Um, you have a website that you keep mostly mm -hmm. up to, I think you keep it up to date to be fair. You've been posting about grey zones. I try. <laughs> um, when you also have a work that's come out as NFTs. Mm -hmm. And so the theme there for me is uh, technology has played like a it's something that you respect mm. and something that you have tried to um, keep abreast with or at least incorporate into your work. I think mm. that's a better way mm. of saying it, mm. right? Uh, the question there would then become, what role does uh, technology play for you and, and, and why do you keep up with it mm. despite the fact that, like we've been saying even before this interview, yeah. right? Yeah. Things move so quickly nowadays. Yeah. Um. You know, in a way, it goes back to what you were just saying about young people and culture. Yeah. Cultures around us, it's not something we say, what is my culture, and try and name it or whatever. We exist in a culture and, it, and we take from it and we must be part of it. Now, our world has, our cultural world has become digital and tech, full of technology. Yeah. Um, so, we need to engage with these things. Uh, we don't. Well, we not. We don't have to do anything. But I think that if we, being part of the contemporary world, it leads us to engaging with these things that are making the world. Yeah, it's part of it. Um, you mentioned my social media. I will take that as a compliment. <laughs> I hate it. You know? <laughs> Do you I, hate I, like I, the routine of having no, to go there? And... I hate all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate uh, I hate using my time doing it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I I don't get a great amount of kick out of get, of reading it or taking part of it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not my world, uh, but I know it's important. You know, if you go to university now and you learn to become an artist, they're going to tell you how to do your social media. Yeah. You have to do that. <laughs> and so I know that's something that needs to be done. Um, you kind of keep it going up, up to a point. Yeah. And sometimes you look and say, wow, I should be doing it like that. Um, <laughs> with my involvement in technology, it's slightly different because, uh, you know, it's a world away from the materials I use. I like materials. I like soil and, and wire and like paper and whatever else. Texture and fuel. You know, <laughs> and this thing has nothing, but it has a root there. In 2012, I got cancer yeah. and I had a very, a class I was very close to at the time. And I went to South Africa to get treatment. Yeah. And just before I left, they grouped together these guys and they did fundraising and they bought, it was an iPad, maybe Series 3 or something yeah. early on. 
Yeah, they bought really one early on. Yeah, into the, yeah. yeah, and it was a present from them. So, so what I and I took it away with me, and I worked on the iPad. That was my first drawings that I made from there, and managed to main, maintain a link with them. So I was kind of teaching them over the phone and through email yeah. and all this. It WhatsApp had only just kind of just come out. Group chats, yeah. anyway, it all emerged there. What I realized with making that work was I could make a join on, on, let's say, an iPad or a phone and they could open it on their phone and they would be looking not at a, a, a replica of my thing, the exact thing, yeah. because it was made of the same pixels and exactly. the same screen and everything. They literally had the same piece of work on that. And that was kind of a thing for me to say, all right, there's another world that exists that's parallel to our reality. Yeah. And when you work in that world, the way that it's structured, people can be looking at the actual things you make, which is different. If I make a photograph, someone in South Africa can only look at a paint. A, sorry, if I make a painting, they can only look at a, photograph, a photograph of it. After or maybe a closest is a video. If I make a digital piece of work, yeah. they can have that exact work. And I thought that's something quite special. So that's interesting to me. And then conceptually that developed up till now with it. I thought that NFTs would be a way of guaranteeing that thing as an individual piece of work, yeah. which is quite different to us being able to share the same thing, yeah. but it's part of the same scale. And it's only an investigation that's just begun with these things. And I realize yeah. that my perception of them is different actually to what they are, I think. so. That's a world I'm just beginning to scratch to, into. To come into understanding. Yeah, but it ties in, as you know, with the ideas that I've been thinking about of crossing borders and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, it's a natural. Yeah, it's another medium that's interesting. I, it, it, it lacks part of what makes us human, a response to the physical world. You yeah. Know? So, you, I look at it as one part of it. I would never see myself as becoming wholly immersed in that world. That's not me. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of many blocks. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it does intrigue me. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought as much. I thought yeah. as much. And yeah. and so I'll I'll ask just two more questions mm -hmm. as we as we round off, right? Um, you've you've actively seen uh, Zimbabwe's art art world, art scene, art industry, all of it for, like we said, three, three to four decades. Long time, right? Um, what do you want to see more of? Like when you go outside, what? And I know that's a question that's like really hard to, mm. because it can be like a critical question, but mm. maybe so, what do you want to see more from yourself, but from yeah, the, yeah, the scene in general? Yeah. So I think like you said, that's a question we could talk about all afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> but the two things I would like to see. One, our artists that are our headline figures are living outside the country. You know, yeah. Th yeah. Th that's tragic. You know, and we can say that about whether it's our sports people or our whatever. Our best talent. It's exactly. In general. That's a terrible it's thing. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. That's a terrible thing. We want them here. You know, we yeah. want to, not only are they, we want them here to lead our country and so the world can actually see what we want. Yeah. We want to participate in their work and to see it and not to have to travel around <laughs> yeah. to see the work of these people. Yeah. It's amazing. We had Virginia Chihote came back a few years ago and filled the National Gallery. It was mind-blowing <laughs> to see this. You know, you say, she's working out. Now, of course, all of us have different lives and different contexts. So yeah. um, I would hate that to be a criticism, but you ask me what I want. That's yeah. what I mean. The yeah. second thing that relates to that, I want my pupils to come back and to be part of this country and this culture. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. And because, because we have this migration, they go out and few come back. Um, and, and I'm talking specifically of the ones that become artists, you know, yeah. for the same reasons. These are um, these are the things we've invested in, the people we've invested. We want them back, yeah. and not 
well, partly for selfish reasons. We wanted, <laughs> we wanted to build our country, yeah. but we also want to pass, participate in that richness that they're going to build. Yeah. So yeah. I, uh, maybe those two things would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah um, I hear it, man. It, you know what it sounds like? I think the perfect analogy is, um, like you mentioned, for selfish reasons, is the same way you want to grow up with uh, your family members and the people you yeah, grew up with absolutely. as friends. Absolutely. Uh, there is beauty in, yeah, in yeah, being yeah. in the same space and, and growing up together, going, yeah. being able to go to each other's weddings and, and, yeah. and, and, and whatnot. Absolutely. Um, but tapping back into, the, into that art scene as well, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I suppose you, you, you touched on it like in... in, in in a way, um, what what are the challenges you you face practicing art like in a context like mm -hmm. ours? So, um, I suppose the market the the market is small, you yes. know. So that conditions things. It's not. I think art around the world is it's a risky profession to go into yeah. if you're wanting to go and make a career that's pro and to earn a living it's probably not the best way but <laughs> nor is acting nor is dancing what these things require a bit of fortune along the way yeah um but it's true that there's places where the market is larger and it comes from all the things and the things that like you doing an exposure to what we do um, people to actually say this has value, you know, and of course it's value in context. Someone needs food more than they need a painting. Yeah. We know yeah. that. <laughs> but but there is value in what we do. If if we have a market and an audience that appreciates it, but also collects it and becomes part of it, that grows the whole thing, you know, yeah. and that would be useful. Yeah. We have a limited number of small galleries. And I suppose that's like anything. It's like what our shops or whatever industry. We have limited things. As they grow, we all benefit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really an invitation for to, for people who, to say, come and look what we do. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe, yeah. You ha maybe you hate it, and maybe you like that. But, but come, come and see it. Yeah. Yeah. 